In the partial shade of a bush, the family life of our vultures takes place on a rocky outcrop. Griffin vultures breed not only in southern Europe, they also do so in North Africa and Asia, mostly in inaccessible rock faces. Here they find the best protection against enemies and nest predators. About three weeks ago the little vulture hatched from the egg, and since vultures are loving parents one of them always stays at the eerie keeping watch. Nothing escapes their eye, and we always have the impression that the bird wants to look through the wall of our tent with its gaze. But the birds don't suspect a thing. They preen themselves quite calmly, which they would not do if they were afraid. It is simply the vulture's way of examining the environment with their powerful eyes. In fact, the vulture's eye is one of the best in the animal kingdom and far superior to the human eye. We are incredibly lucky. The old vulture starts feeding just as we finish setting up the equipment. The young one begs loudly. It is obviously not going fast enough for him. Now we see it clearly. A quick shake and chunks of food slip out of the old vulture's crop. Unlike other birds of prey, griffin vultures carry the food for their young in their crop. This is quite good because the food is pre-digested in the crop with pumped up gastric juice. This makes it more digestible for the little vulture. In vultures the crop is exceptionally expandable. Large food reserves can be stored in it. This is a useful feature, because during longer periods of hunger the vultures can feed themselves and their young from the crop. This also explains the vultures' seemingly excessive gluttony. Since they don't find food every day, they have to stock up. They have to take advantage of momentary food offers. They fill their crops until they are fully stuffed. After feeding, the adult bird provides shade. At the same time this contact behavior gives the young one a feeling of security. Its begging has stopped, it is full and content. Four hours later the second vulture appears. It keeps on course for the eerie, and to slow down its speed it lets its legs hang down, which has an effect similar to the spoilers on an airplane. In a sophisticated technique, the large birds approach the eerie from below and then intercept the remaining speed by flapping their wings. The replacement for the first vulture is here. Now it's the other's turn to go on a search flight. Surprisingly quickly it has returned and we succeed in obtaining rare footage. The bird of prey has brought water for the little one. Now in the early morning, it is not yet terribly hot here in the tent. But the heat of the last few days has claimed a few victims among the Spanish cattle. And we've set up our tent here close to such a heat victim, a dead calf, because we want to observe the vulture's big feast. But the vultures have not yet appeared in the last two days that we have been here. Nevertheless, we are sure that the vultures are already circling at high altitude and observe the whole scene. This means that we can only enter and leave the tent at night. In a sense we are stuck in a prison which we can't even leave for the most basic human needs. Our cameras run and record the behavior of the first two vultures who beat around the bush. The ornithologist Klaus Kinnick was the first to discover that the hierarchy in a group of griffin vultures is not fixed. For these birds, hunger regulates the pecking order. What an impressive sight! With a massive 2.6 meter wingspan the vulture claims in a sovereign pose the entire calf for itself. 
More hungry vultures flock to the table. For us, things become confusing. The jostling effect blurs the order of precedence. It is hard to tell which of the vultures currently holds the supremacy. The beaten vulture cries piteously, and to make matters worse, the poor guy is held down and pinched in the sensitive neck by his attacker. The law of the fist like in the Wild West. The strongest and boldest remains the victor, but the fights are not as dangerous as they seem. We have never observed any serious injuries. The regulating mechanisms of the pecking order are ritualistic. First the imposing, then threatening. Only when neither of these is heated, there'll be a fight. This fight, however, is not meant to hurt the conspecific or to put him out of action. It is only supposed to show the opponent who has the upper hand at the moment. The vulture demonstrates the advantages of its long, almost naked neck. Without having to open the tough leather skin of a carcass, the vulture reaches intestines and muscle pots through the natural body openings alone. It is not unavoidable that the head and neck become stained with blood and dirt. But due to the special structure of the sparse feathers, any dirt is almost automatically repelled when it dries. Gluttony and full satisfaction. The extras of the hot battle at the cold buffet offer a colorful picture. Watching increases his greed to excess. The water runs into his beak, literally overflows until it drips. Now his hunger gets the better of him. He can no longer stop himself. The sneaky attack helps him to an outright victory. But just as he is about to enjoy the victory, he gets attacked. This way of immoderately craning their necks with carcasses, of soiling and sullying themselves. All this gives them a lousy image when superficially observed. And so it speaks for the insight of ancient civilized peoples that they regard vultures awestruck, regardless of their disgusting trade. We must remember that vast tropical areas of our planet have been saved from total contamination. The vultures are the hygienic birds that clean up all the decay.